right, and today we're checking out the new MacBook Pro 2020. That is right before any other channel, before any other YouTube. You got it here first before you're even able to get the MacBook Pro 2020. What does that tell you? Skylar's the hot guy. Skylar gets it before anybody else. You can't even order one of these without seeing January 2021 on there. And yet, here it is. I got it right here. What does that say? Now, I know you're just as excited as I am to go ahead and open up this bad boy and take a peek. But first and foremost, wait, hold on a second. Call me Bully Mates, because but wait, there's more. If you like the video, like the video, please. Subscribe to the channel for more content. It helps me get better lighting equipment, more video editing, eat that bit. It helps me get everything done so that I can go ahead and provide content like this to you guys. We're gonna go ahead and open it up, but we've already opened it up previously so that we can see what's inside, how fast it is. And let me just tell you this thing runs like a piece of cake. It's so nice, amazing. But you know what, just for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and do an unboxing so that we can go ahead and see what's inside. The MacBook Pro 2020 13 inch USB-C cable for charging, I assume. The packet, the booklet of why you should be saved by Apple. This is Apple coming to your door knocking on your door, trying to tell you about why Apple is your savior. Do you open the door? Do you read the pamphlet? Do you buy Girl Scout cookies? Burning questions, I know. This is the signature 61 watt. Is it 61? That sounds right. Yeah, that sounds off. Yeah, 61. 61? Yeah, 61 watt USB-C power adapter. Why they chose 61 and not 65? That's so weird. This is the signature 61 watt power brick of charging. Why they chose 61 and not 65 or 85 is beyond me. But maybe if you guys know, put it in the comment section below and give me some education because obviously I need some. We go ahead and unpack this over here. Got to be careful with it. Oh, it just smells like Cupertino. I can smell the lilac. Man, look at that beauty. This is so nice, so clean. Oh, this is a beautiful piece of technology. Honestly, Apple kills it every single time they try to bring something out. Their meticulous detail is just strikingly amazing. Is this something that you should buy if you already have a MacBook Pro? Or if you're just coming into the MacBook Pro market, should this be something that you buy? Let's go ahead and find out. The MacBook Pro 2020 comes with two options of quad-core processors, the i5 at 1.4 gigahertz, and 2.0 gigahertz and the i7 at 1.7 gigahertz and 2.3 gigahertz slightly heavier than the macbook pro 2019 by about 0.3 kilograms comes with five hard drive storages all ssd the 256 gig 512 gig one terabyte two terabyte and a whopping four terabyte of storage really nice touch that they added these for the hardcore ed editors just like myself the memory comes at 8 gigs or 16 gigs at 21 to 33 megahertz lp ddr3 and 16 gigs or 32 gigs at 37 33 megahertz lp ddr4x which for those of you who didn't know the lp ddr4x is a great touch as it reduces power consumption but does cost a bit of the bandwidth ultimately on the macbook pros i know that they are power hungry so it is nice to of the Apple wizards to take energy consumption into consideration. The display is a 13.3 inch 2569 by 1600 IPS wide color P3 display with two tone. It comes with an Intel Iris Plus graphics 645, 65 by 66 bat lit magic keyboard with touch bar, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, Wi-Fi 802.11ac with Bluetooth 5.0, a 720p FaceTime HD camera, stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos support along with three mics and a headphone jack. And finally, a 58 watt, 10 hour battery life. Let's go ahead and talk about the processor. You know, I think one of the key takeaways about the processor is that in the new MacBook Pro 13 inch 2020s is that baseline you're working with a i5 processor no matter what. So they really raised the bar on baseline speed, meaning that the MacBook Pro 2020 is going to be faster than the previous year's baseline model, which is very nice. And it's also nice to have current generation processor chips inside of your devices. 
As far as memory, Apple did increase the memory since its 2019 predecessor, starting at baseline eight gigs of memory, which is very good, especially for hardcore editors like you and I. Gone are the days of four gig RAM. Who even, what is the point of four gigs when you're trying to edit? Thank you, Apple, so much for taking into consideration artists like me who like to edit and who do require more than four gigs of RAM. So that's a huge plus right there. The storage was also boosted considerably, being that it's now baseline double the amount of what it was last year. Last year's previous model was at 128 gigs. This one is currently sitting at baseline model 256 gigs. But then again, if you are like me and you use external hard drives, which I do for basically everything because I like to separate each drive for what it is, then maybe storage isn't necessarily a big thing for you, a big factor. But for those of you who are dependent on internal storage, 256 gigs on a solid state drive is very decent on a baseline price. Then the display. The display itself has been tweaked so that it can power higher model monitors. So it can hold one 6K monitor at 60 megahertz and two 4K monitors at 60 megahertz. So you have the options. You can choose the one monitor running at 6K at 60 megahertz, or you have the second option, two 4K monitors running at 60 hertz. The body is slightly thicker, being that it's about 0.61 of an inch. The 2020 model and its 2019 predecessor, they're pretty much the same. These are really slight differences. So not much for you to notice when you're buying the newer model, if you buy it and if you already had its great touches, slight differences. At the base price of $12.99, being that it's the base model MacBook Pro at 256 gigs SSD, if you don't have a MacBook Pro, which I currently don't, I'd highly suggest getting the newest generation, newest iteration of MacBook Pro 2020. You just can't beat it. If you already have a MacBook Pro, maybe 2015 or recent, I definitely wouldn't suggest buying a new one just yet because although it has its nice finishing touches, being the extra hard drive space, the extra memory, it's personally up to you to decide whether or not you wanna replace an already new unit that you just got with a newer unit. Because even me, I fix MacBooks and I fix MacBook Pros. I would still be just as fine using a 2011 upgraded Mind you, not just some random 2011 MacBook Pro, but me personally working on the MacBook Pro, upgrading the system so that it can meet my standards, I would still be comfortable with that rather than dishing out a whole $1,200 on a MacBook Pro 2020. But like I said earlier, call me Billy Mays because but wait, there's more. If I didn't have a MacBook Pro, if I didn't have a laptop, and I'm trying to figure out what could last me the next five to 10 years of my computing, of my editing, then I would feel comfortable saying that the new MacBook Pro 2020 is going to be my buy of 2020. I would definitely dish out $12.99 if I didn't have any other laptop for editing on this device because this device is a pure beauty and creation. It's got great hardware, great specs. Apple really took their time in trying to make sure what is the best fit for the overall editor? What is the best fit for the overall artist so that I'm able to take this and keep it for the next five to 10 years? The way I see it is, is that they don't necessarily want me to keep buying new MacBook Pros. Not in this case. They want me to have a MacBook Pro and hold on to it a little bit. It's like wine. Take a sip. Don't drink the whole thing. Just take a sip. Smell it. Aerate it so that you can get a feel for what it actually is. Well, those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, 